Welcome to Exploring with us with Ed and Cheryl. This week we started celebrating National Parks Week early. We had a quite adventurous weekend. We planted some trees. Yes, we, we did. We uh, missed a baseball game because I don't know how to use a calendar. Mm -hmm. And uh, we tried <laughs> P.F. Chang's for the first time. Yeah. And then we also uh, uh, ended on a more somber note where uh, yes. we went to a Holocaust commemoration for Yom HaShoah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Cheryl got to um, meet up with some old friends of hers and uh, commemorate the victims of the Holocaust. And it was a, a beautiful concert and uh, program there um, that talked about the resistance and those who fought back. It's very touching. Exactly. So let's start with Saturday, though. Yeah. So on Saturday, we went out and uh, decided to get a little local history at the Augusta Canal, where there was also an old mill. Yeah. And they were having uh, a festival. I guess this is the second year that they've done this little celebration. So what was your favorite part of that day? Well, I love the I love history. So I loved um, the museum that they had there. You'll see if you're watching the video here on YouTube, you'll see different parts of the museum tour. Um, like uh, just the building of it, what it what it took, um, some of the struggles they had with with the canal, and then because um, they built it too small to start with, exactly, yeah, they <laughs> built it too small, and they realized um, that they had to uh, widen the canal, just like a lot of things, you know. It, right, and so and they were uh, creating hydroelectricity there for which the it, it plant, does, yeah. yeah. So you know, because. Of course, in the South, it was really known for cotton production. Mm -hmm. And so this was a, a factory that mm -hmm. took the cotton and made it into textiles. And then they would send it down to the Savannah River. Yeah, yeah so, down uh, the river. <laughs> yeah, so the, canal, the canals are still there. And right. um, now they've been preserved. I think at one point they had fallen into disrepair, as sometimes will happen. And then some people came in and built this incredible museum. They had a really nice store. Mm -hmm. But my favorite part... Or uh, there was a petting zoo that had come in for the day. Yeah. And so oh, they, yeah. Oh, yeah. They petting had zoo. Sheep and goats and uh, a cow, a little baby cow, and a donkey, which I loved. I loved that donkey. Which you'll, you'll get cow. to see some of it on our social media. Yeah, I shared a video and, of me feeding and on the this, YouTube uh, video this aggressive this. goat, this food aggressive goat. Yes. <laughs> And the donkey. We were joking that was an Eddie goat. Eddie, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, what do you got? Food, food? I'll take yeah, it. Mine, he will mine. take your food away from you. Yeah. And that's what that, that goat was doing. And you you did feed one or two animals. It was a donkey. Maybe. But you didn't like it. Uh, well, his, his tongue is like, <laughs> I was like, ah. I loved it. But, they were uh, so sweet. I they loved were very it. There sweet. Was, and of course, there were a lot of children. And they had some bunnies, too. Yeah, yeah. The bunnies act like the they didn't have so. no time for nobody. <laughs> <laughs> they were doing their bunnies were doing their own thing, so and, were, and we wanted to ride the canal boat. I just like taking a boat ride anyway, yeah. but um, I guess the boat got tired. <laughs> well, the, the lady had said the boat had run so many times that day, and so by it the time only we run got so there, much. We, yeah, it, it had exceeded its maximum runnage time, I guess, or <laughs> running time. I don't know. And oh, I was really excited when we got there because there was a sign that said Fat Man's Cafe, and that just sounded like a good place to try. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was okay. Well, they had a very limited menu for yeah. for the event, so they I think it was just you could have a hamburger, you could have a hot dog. And when you're hungry, that's or fine. you could have that's chicken nuggets. Fine. So it was great because there were a lot of kids yeah, there. That's yeah. perfect kid menu. Yeah. Um, not very good for vegans or vegetarians. Uh, no, but they, on the wall, they had a much bigger menu. menu so I so guess you can. There were probably more options that we didn't explore. Yeah. yeah but, well, um, you couldn't explore because it wasn't available. True. 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 And they had some good desserts in the case, but we didn't try any of those either. No, so, no. but it was nice to have a little snack. And there was uh, one family near us with just the most mm -hmm. adorable little kids a dad by mm -hmm. himself with three kids and i saw him yeah. later when we were in the museum and the kids were still being so good so i told him like your kids are so well behaved um they were they were cute so and and they were running around they had some live music there yeah yeah there was food a, trucks because yeah. we could have tried a food truck i guess yeah well we didn't get to the food truck no because we ate first <laughs> well i was busy taking pictures like a hundred thousand pictures <laughs> like i normally do of everything so so yeah, I was busy taking pictures of everything. Well, and we'll have the pictures uh, on our uh, what's that called blogger page. So yeah, explorewithus.blogspot.com. You can catch those photos there. Right. Um, so that was Saturday because then we went and bought more trees 
to plant in our yard. We're growing a big fruit garden, so well, I guess we can call it I big. Guess, but yeah. well, I guess we're going to open a fruit stand. It's our gar- <laughs> it's our Garden of Eden. Uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, you know the idea of having a garden is great. Doing it, doing it, it's next, <laughs> it's in that another level. But uh, we're enjoying it. It's yeah. fun. We're just doing a little bit at a time, and yeah. so hopefully we'll have some oranges, oranges, and uh, what's the other apples, thing? apples, peaches. Yeah, we had we not pumpkin pie. We, we had to go any pumpkins. You wanted that certain apple tree, gala apple. Gala. Apples. We saw this gala apple tree. I fell in love and with. We and we had, had to. to Go back because we couldn't back. fit it in our car. <laughs> it was bigger than the car, yeah. But we we made it happen somehow, and <laughs> and uh, had a big old allergy attack. But uh, but I lived through we it. We were you know? fine. We, we were fine. We, My we knee fine. was killing me, and he had allergies, and it was a lovely day. So you it was still it was have still a lovely, a lovely day. day, yeah, in spite of everything. So <laughs> so the garden's coming together. And then uh, Sunday, I was excited. It sounds strange to say excited about a Holocaust commemoration, but one of my yeah. colleagues that I worked with. Years ago, I helped him actually premiere one of his uh, Holocaust commemoration pieces, Dr. Lawrence Schur. Mm -hmm. He is a composer in residence at Kennesaw State University. And so I'd seen in the local news that there was going to be a concert and it was going to be his music that was featured. And so I said, let's go. I want to see I want to see him and I want to hear the music. And he just has um, an incredible talent for taking pieces of other art so whether it's poetry or it's music and and combining that into something new to pay tribute to um the both the victims and the survivors of the holocaust um yeah. his mother was was a survivor in her family um his father's family had come uh from uh what do you say lithuania i believe so uh, yeah. right before like in the 1930s when things were starting to get to get bad Uh, and came to America then. So uh, it really impacted him. And I think one of the most moving parts of the commemoration though, besides the music, which also uh, the pianist that was with him was another another friend and former colleague, uh, Dr. Robert Henry, uh, who is an international award-winning pianist. But during, uh, they said the Kaddish for each of the the camps uh, there. So um, whenever they said the name of, of one of the camps, then if you were if you had family that were in that camp, then you would stand. And so that was right. very it's very real finally. That history is very real when you go It to was very like palatable that. when you they showed some video to some survivors and that Yeah, you know, speaking or, and, and, and talking about their time there. And of course that was very um very made it very real and yeah uh, it's not just in the history book it's not just on yeah. the history channel there it's, are it's, people it's, today whose lives are still impacted right, right there's still families that are still impacted by the holocaust and and it's, um you commemorate it so that you don't they forget repeat it yeah and we, and we talked repeat. about we talked about that they talked about that in the program was sponsored by the augusta jewish museum which we're going to have to visit i didn't even know it right. existed yeah uh, we hadn't discovered that yet so um To realize, because the program this time was really about honoring the people, not just who were victims, but those who resisted and those who fought back. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Dr. Schur had brought together pieces by these four different uh, composers uh, who were who were either involved in, in actively fighting back or resistance. And I was particularly moved by the story of one cantor who, when they brought the whole village out to kill everyone, he sang. And that saved his life. And so they had that music that right. he, they had a video of him later because he would go to these Holocaust events and he would sing. Right. Um, and they had a video of him singing it or, or an audio recording of him singing it. It was a celebration of even in the darkest times, people would express themselves through the arts. And we're still human, even at, our, st- yes, even at the worst yes, of times. You know, and, and through their poetry and and the music and and the music and poetry kind of blend well together as well. But um, he was the a- able to, uh, your friend, sort of, to create. Yeah, to weave those songs uh, that were created then or, or an original piece. sung then to yeah. comfort people, even though, you know, even in situations where they knew, like, there was no way out. Mm-hmm. But they still had these songs. Like, one of the songs was a lullaby um, that this woman would sing to the children inside the ghetto when they didn't have music. And so right. she would sing to them to bring them some sort of comfort. 
and and I think you know the other thing talking about remembering the past so that it doesn't repeat itself. They had the candle lighting with six candles to right. represent the six million Jews that died in the yeah, Holocaust, yeah. and they did acknowledge other people also died, but the Jews were the primary and, primary targets. But they had those candles brought up by children. I think of that particular congregation, and, and that was I think also to remind, as one of the speakers said, to remember that children were yeah, 1.5 million yeah. children were killed they were killed burned you know to ashes gassed and gassed or burned and or both yes. and... so you know we we think, always think it's adults we think it's something that doesn't affect us that maybe isn't a reality or something but but when you when you think about children and, and all of that it's um it makes it um a little bit more real you know and, and just Real pungent, I guess. Well, and the music, or, though, was so beautiful and uplifting because that was the purpose of that music that they were singing at the time. It reminded me of that film from, was it in the 1990s, Life is Beautiful, where the family gets sent yes. to the concentration uh, camp, the but 90s? the father has uh, has carried on with his son as if this is all a game. And at the end, he wins an American tank. <laughs> he thinks he's yeah. won the contest. And so that idea that even even in all of this darkness, there's still humanity there's and light. There's always light. Yeah. yeah. And and it's important to spread the light in the darkness because darkness can't exist in the in light. In the light. So, right, exactly. So yeah. the smallest light dispels the biggest darkness. I've yeah. heard that before. So slipping back into something a little less somber, yeah. we uh, afterwards, we thought we were going to go to one restaurant, but we got there and there was a huge group of people going in. So we went. We saw a bridal party and we were like, nope, can't go there. <laughs> Even though that would have been a lot of fun. I, I probably would have joined yeah. in their celebration. <laughs> but for the first time ever, we tried P.F. Chang's, which, which I bought some of their frozen I stuff felt like we've, from the grocery store. I thought I had eaten there before, but apparently I hadn't. And, it was uh, so good. And our server, good. she was awesome. She was, she was very good. What did we have? We had Oh, we had a we had a vegetarian dish called the Buddha Bowl or something like that. I so it was so. And, tofu um, and broccoli and green beans and carrots and mushrooms. And was, we had some dim, so dim sun. We? Did, no, we had spring rolls. Spring rolls? Okay. Spring rolls. Excuse There's me. photos in here. And then uh, we decided on a whim to ask about dessert. I really didn't expect that they would have desserts. <laughs> I shouldn't have done dessert. <laughs> I just shouldn't have. And so she brought out a menu and it was like it was five good. or six things. And there were two that they made in-house, which was a, an apple, kind of an apple crisp kind of thing. And then mm -hmm. a banana. They were so good. Yeah. We ate everything. It was fantastic. We didn't eat for a long time after that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we um we had a great weekend, even though there were some things in there like missing the baseball game and the sadness. Mm -hmm. But then I got to see my old Can't friends. Can't always do everything. Yeah, but <laughs> and had we not gone there, you would not probably seen. No, him. and I didn't even know that Dr. Henry was coming. And it was funny because I remember him from when he was a piano student. And so I was like Robbie, and I'm like, oh, he probably doesn't have people yell Robbie at him <laughs> anywhere anymore. So yeah. oops. Um, but so let's get on to this week's Q and A. Okay. All right. So since we're coming up to National Parks Week starting on the twenty second, um, let's talk about some of the national places we've been to. So, what is one of your favorite national sites that that you've been to? Well, I think I'd be remiss if I did not mention the Grand Canyon because that's so spectacular. You know, of course, we didn't do the whole Grand Canyon. Well, we, just we didn't even to, plan oh, to do the Grand Canyon. That was the spur of the moment. Maybe one yeah, hour we're out on of a, the we way. We were on a trip. road trip, and I saw a sign. It's like, hey, it's just one hour to the Grand Canyon. And so like, oh, we ended up we getting our hotel to to at like Canyon. two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it was crazy, but and it what was were fun. the animals? I think there were moose. That were I just on the trail. Correctly. We probably have some pictures of that. Somewhere. Oh yeah, I have, have to, to pull them out and post put them on, on social, social media. media. Um, so you want to follow us there? But yeah, yeah, we we had fun um, doing that. And I got to ask you, Cheryl. I'll return the question. What was one of your favorite national parks and uh, <laughs> well, you know, visits. of course, been to Fort Pulaski and Savannah a million times. Yes, um, went there on our anniversary a couple of years. You sure did. Um, but I think my favorite is going to the national monuments in Washington D.C. Yeah, and one like in particular, the this, Memorial this, and yeah, all that. This really doesn't have anything to do with the the monument itself, but at Lincoln Memorial, we'd taken uh, one of my young cousins and a friend of his. They were both like like sixteen at the time. And I bet them that we could get to the train station before them. And they're like, oh, you're old. You can't get you can't to do that. And so I bet them $100. And they went running down the stairs in the rain. 
train. They ran all the way from the top of the Lincoln Memorial up the hill to, I think that's the Foggy Bottom Station. And we just walked down to the bottom of the memorial and there's a whole taxi stand. So we caught a taxi. Caught yeah. a taxi, went to the train station. We weren't young enough to beat them, but they we were, were but smart enough. We were smart enough. So. <laughs> and they got yeah. there and they're so drenched and wet and they're like how did you do that we, we all had a we fun never time, told so. them we never yeah. told them so we're like we're just yeah we know so, so sort of accidental trip to the grand canyon yeah fun at, at the lincoln memorial you know you can find things to do and yeah. so our challenge to you this week again ahead of national parks week in the u.s um go to nps.gov and you will find hundreds of Parks, seashores, preserves, historic sites, walking trails, military yeah. parks. Um, there is there is definitely something close enough to you that you can that you can get to it. So um, go do that. If you're not in the United States, I know that there are there are other landmarks and national sites in other countries, so you can find one to go to and just enjoy it. Maybe learn a little bit of history. Maybe learn a little bit of about. Um, nature or maybe you just enjoy the peace and excitement of being there so and also i recommend and this is this is an unpaid for plug follow national parks on um on twitter and instagram because they are hilarious oh yeah I you, you got a, a like to your tweet or something you you tagged them in <laughs> That is funny. I said the uh, the snark is strong is strong with this one. Yes. <laughs> so remember to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Check out the blog on Blogspot. And we'll see you back here next week on uh, exploring with us with Ed and Cheryl. And um, remember to find the joy in the journey. So thanks for exploring with us. <laughs>